Hello, my name is Peter Mahorter, and I'm here to talk about fractal coordinates for procedural content generation. I'm going to start with some examples. Um, the first example is called Labor Infinite. It generates incrementally and indefinite, and it generates a chaotic, complete path through all of 2D space. So it's an infinite path through infinite space. Um, here is the demo, um, and you can pause the video and follow that link or look for the link in the paper. Um, we are moving along a path that is sort of wiggly, um, and it's about to transition to a different path that was generated using a different seed, but it's just as wiggly. Stop that transition and slow it down. Um, I want us to think about what it would take to generate this infinite path. In particular, the idea that there are some constraints involved. For example, if we make a loop and then come back and touch ourselves, that can't happen because we would cut off an area within that loop that we'd never be able to reach again, right? Because we have to never retrace our steps with this path, but we have to touch each point on the grid. Um, if I zoom out, I just want to demonstrate, uh, you'll see these little uh, circles. That's the area that it hasn't generated yet, and you'll watch as it fills in those areas um, as fast as it can. So it is really generating this stuff incrementally, piece by piece. Um, let me show you the other demo real quick, called Effervescent. Um, this demo, again, you'll see the circles generating incrementally. Um, is slightly different. It generates um, a maze, which does have sort of branchings and, and joinings, and it has the little cycles in it. So it has a little cycle here, this little tetra shape. Um, here's another little cycle, right, that you could go around in a loop. And then like, hey, there's a bigger cycle to go around here, and there's an even bigger cycle to go all the way around here and all the way over here and back down here and all the way back here. Um, and so what this is doing is it's generating fractal cyclic structures where um, as you explore, you'll sort of end up coming back to where you were before. So those are the, the motivating examples that you can achieve with fractal coordinates. Um, now let me talk about the problem that sort of led me to think about this. So uh, in many cases, we'd like to generate interconnected, chaotic, indefinite worlds, and we'd like to do that incrementally. Um, classic example would be Minecraft, right? Where as you explore, the world is generated, only the parts that you explore are generated, so we don't have to you know, spend time and space generating things that you're never gonna see. Um, and one of the things that we'd like to do is have interconnected structures in these worlds. So at large scales, have things that sort of rely on and affect each other. And that's something that Minecraft fakes a little bit, but doesn't necessarily do that well, and it's a hard problem. Um, so, Rivers are a great example of that. Um, if you think about the amount of water flowing into the Atlantic Ocean or into the Gulf of Mexico from Louisiana and the Mississippi River, um, that is determined by uh, you know rainfall and water flow throughout most of the continental United States. Um, and because that flow at one point depends on flows at many other points, it's hard to do incrementally. Um, also, we have other constraints, like watersheds cannot overlap each other. So there's two approaches you might take. One is make some big chunks, maybe a whole continent, generate all the rivers on that continent, um, and store them. Um, and that way we can use some generation process that will, you know, respect all these constraints we need to respect. Um, and there might be seams to those chunks, um, but maybe those seams are in the ocean and we don't care about them or something like that. Another approach is uh, maybe we can have small chunks that do generate incrementally, but they talk to their neighbors to figure out what the information they need is. Um, that might have a problem that if you have to talk to your neighbor and they have to talk to their neighbor and they have to talk to their neighbor, uh, we're not really doing incremental generation anymore. We're asking the entire watershed uh, uh, to generate. So big chunk generation, right? We have seams that are rare because our chunks are big. But if the chunks are large, then we kind of don't get the benefit of incremental generation because we have to generate and store a lot of information up front. Local communication, well, we could communicate with our neighbors, but like I said, there's this problem of regress where if they communicate with their neighbors, eventually we generate the whole watershed to figure out what the river value is, and that's not really incremental anymore. So what approach are we gonna take to solve this problem? We are gonna use chunks that are separate from each other that allow for this incremental generation and especially the indefinite nature where as much as you want to explore, you can keep going, it'll keep generating. Um, and we're going to communicate limited information between the chunks. 
um, to, to blur those seams a little bit and maintain some of this interconnectedness, we're going to limit the amount of regression that happens in terms of asking each other um, in chains by always regressing back to a common root. So let me talk about fractal coordinates and how they work. The idea is actually fairly straightforward, is to overlay multiple grid systems at different scales. And this is not a new idea by any means. Um, you simply have like, let's say a one by one grid and a five by five grid, and you do different things in the five by five grid and the one by one grid. Um, truly fractal coordinates, instead of just having a fixed number of grids, have an indefinite number of grids. So a one by one, a five by five, a 25 by 25, um, whatever your scale, scale factor is. The key, actually non-trivial idea here is to offset the larger grids to ensure that for every base grid cell, there's some origin tile that contains it. And I'll show you what that means in a second. Um, we can pick our scale multipliers and we could apply this to more or less than two dimensions if we wanted, but my examples are gonna be 2D. Here's a diagram for scale factor four. Here you see the height equals zero base grid of one by one. Here's our origin cell in blue. And that origin cell is inside an origin cell at height equals one, that's a four by four relative to the base grid. And of course, there's a grandparent, which is 16 by 16 relative to the base grid or four by four relative to height equals one. Notice that if we had stacked all of these left hand, bottom left corners onto the same tile, which we could have done, um, then the, the tiles over here in the negative XY region will not be inside of any origin cell, no matter how high up we go. In contrast, by doing this kind of like flip-flopping of offsets, um, the, the region is getting bigger and bigger in all directions. And eventually, no matter where you are, there'll be some origin cell with x, y coordinate zero, zero, and a big height that does continue. So this is what I just said, x, y coordinates, h for the height at which we're operating, and then the scale factor specifies the relationship, the multiplier between one height and the next. Um, in this system, each tile has a unique parent tile at the next tire scale, and except for the base layer, um, each tile has scale factor by scale factor child tiles. So what are the benefits of this? Well, people already operate generation systems at multiple scales of grid. Like you could have a room system at one scale and a smaller scale for generating furniture in the rooms, for example. Um, with fractal coordinates, you sort of like formalize that and also allow talking between the different scales pretty easily. Thanks to that offset I mentioned, there are no edges, which are edges at every scale. And that means that eventually if you ask your parent, 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 there will be some tile that contains both you and all of your neighbors um, and could potentially have information about what those neighbors are doing. Um, the higher level tiles cover exponentially more area. So we don't need that many layers to get to a height that we like. And, um, we can regress to the origin from any point with logarithmic time and space complexity. And that's the sort of key trick to the demos I showed, and that's what I'm gonna talk about next. So, communication between chunks creates dependencies, and that works against incremental generation, right? The river's asking each other for flow rates. In the worst case, we have infinite regression, so we want regression to be directed and finite and hopefully short. Um, in fractal coordinates, instead of asking neighbors, we can try asking our parent tile. And that actually allows a question to be answered with more context. How does this regression to the origin work? Well, from any tile, we can say if you're not the or an origin tile, so your height, whatever it is, but your x and y are not zero, zero, you just ask your parent for help. Eventually that parent will be an origin tile at some height. If you are an origin tile, one of your children is also an origin tile, you ask that child for help. And if you're the origin tile, h equals zero, that's the end of the regression chain. What does this look like? Well, if our scale factor is five and we have coordinates six, four, here's a diagram of how that works. So here's our tile six, four. Six, four asks its parent for help. It says, I wanna know how much water is flowing through me, but I need to know about my neighbors to know that. So parent, tell me about my neighbors. The light blue parent asks its parent for help because it is not an origin tile. Its coordinates are one, one. The parent at height two has coordinate zero, zero. Um, and so this purple tile says, okay, I'm an origin tile. Before I generate my information, I'm gonna go ask my child in the center for help. 
And so that child in the center of the light red tile asks the dark red tile, which is the origin cell, hey, what are you doing? The origin cell makes some arbitrary decision. It says, I'm flowing north with five units. Um, and then the light red tile says, okay, based on that information, I'm going to generate flows for the rest of the cells within me. And I'm going to do that in a way that respects the constraint that you've set up. Then the purple tile says, okay, based on the information of this light red tile, the aggregate flow, not the individual flows, um, I'm going to generate aggregate flows for all of the whole region that I cover. Then this light blue tile gets that information from the parent and says, oh, well, my neighbor's aggregate flows are like this, so I'm going to generate detailed flows inside me. Finally, the dark blue tile gets a specific flow number, and that's the end of our regression. Notice that other tiles in this square, if they were to ask for flow information, we would just immediately use the cached flow information from the parent. We wouldn't have to do all of these steps again. So what guarantees do we get? If you're an origin tile, you know that no tiles have been generated at higher heights, um, nor any of your siblings at the same height. You're the first tile at that height to be generated. You can make whatever decisions you want, and other people will have to um, respect those constraints that you're setting up as long as you respect the uh, decisions of your child's tile in the center. Um, and if you're not an origin tile, then your parent must already be generated. So you can rely on that information to make whatever decisions you want. Basically, you can know what your neighbors are doing based on the parent um, before you make your own decisions. This regression is short. Um, basically, log time is really cool. Um, if we take the log base 5 of 2 to the 32, it's just 28 steps to get to the origin, right? Even if you're all the way out there at max int. Um, and, you know, in contrast, if we were at 2 to the 32x and we wanted to go by neighbors back to the origin, even if we're taking steps of 500,000, that's like thousands of steps. So what can we do with this kind of system where we have information from our parent or our child? We can run an expensive, maybe constraint-solving process for each of these small tiles because they're so small that the sort of, you know, NP-complete, difficult, uh, time-consuming nature of that process doesn't necessarily make things impossible. Um, and only a small amount of information has to pass between the tiles. So the, the children of the origin constrain part of their parent. The parents constrain the edges of their children, except the origins, which, which sort of constrained them already. Um, and then regression of the origin, right, limits the number of steps we have to take. So a small number of steps using small areas of generation allows us to use expensive processes for that generation. So it's kind of the best of both worlds of this chunk-based and local communication. The seam effect can be mitigated by information from the parent tiles. Um, the, uh, the tiles can communicate, right, to coordinate constraints, and regression is sort of limited in scope. Technically, are we really totally incremental? No, because generating a certain tile depends on a bunch of other tiles, but the number of tiles it depends on is strictly limited. Um, so, what are the takeaways from this talk? Um, first of all, in the paper, there's related work. There's some really cool related work. You should go read about that. And there's details on those demo systems and how they work in, in particular. Um, I don't have time for that now. Um, second of all, we can. Uh, I want people to use fractal coordinates. I want you to try it out. Um, it's, it's dead simple to implement the math of like, who's my parent, who's my child, you know, have multiple grids instead of just a single grid. Um, and you don't have to do this regression to the origin if you don't want to. You can just use the multiple scale grids to do cool stuff. Feel free to get in touch about that. Finally, what are next steps for research? Uh, I want to make a demo for flow generation, the example I've been talking about that doesn't actually have a demo yet. I want to have some real playable applications, not just these demos that are sort of neat toys. And uh, if you've heard of wave function collapse, uh, I want to do some fractal wave function collapse, which should be pretty fun. Thank you for listening. <laughs>